So this week we're talking about the movie Tar. The first hour of this movie is essentially a few one-on-one -on -one conversations with Kate Blanchett's character, Lydia Tar. And so the first one is a conversation with a New York reporter. I think so. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's a, he's sure. a real he's a he's a real a, a real guy, and that I goes into the New Yorker. Yeah. yeah, pretty much all huh. the exposition you get is like kind of in this interview, and she talks about the things she wants to do. And there's a big chunk of one-on-one -on -one time with another conversation with I believe one of her peers about uh, just life working in the orchestra industry kind of and then the third part is uh this is the first time you actually see other characters it's not one-on-one -on -one. she's teaching at juilliard which probably one of the going to be one of the more popular scenes in the film you're kind of establishing who is this character lydia tar through here and then after so she seems like this pretty prestigious wealthy kind of a badass composer and quite quickly it forms into maybe there's other things going on here maybe she's a bit of a sociopath and we get to kind of be a fly on the wall for her relationship with her wife with her child i believe her child yeah. and the ongoings of working in a powerful position in a popular orchestra there may or may not be some downfall at the end so with that, is that a pretty good summary of what, what we're working with with this movie? Anything you guys want to throw in? It's not. It doesn't grab you. It doesn't grab you and hold your attention like it should. It doesn't hold your attention for entertainment value. It holds your attention for what is this? Why am I? How does this all fit together? Mm -hmm. I, I agree with you, John. And one of the things that bothered me the most about this movie is um, Rowan, during his synopsis, he kept saying, uh, things like I think it was her wife I think it was her kid I think it was a colleague I think like there's so much ambiguity in the movie like we don't know her relationship with her wife was it her wife was it a girlfriend you know we don't it, it's there, there's so much stuff that I was sitting there out completely taken out of the movie going what's going on who who is she talking to right now that I kind of explained it as a fly on the wall like after a little while, especially that second scene in the restaurant where she's talking, the audio is actually kind of hard to hear in that one. So I felt like I was sitting at another table listening in. And throughout this entire movie, I just felt like I was looking through a peephole watching somebody's life. And this movie is not so much even about the orchestra. It's not about anything. I mean, it's a character study, right? It's just, right. hey, this is about yeah. Lydia Tarr from start to finish. And I guess I'll push back a little bit because I, I know it's an extremely slow burn. I was, I felt, I felt that burden too, but the character was always interesting to me and complex. Yeah. Uh, maybe what she was doing wasn't, but the, again, uh, this type of movie, I don't think you're there for anything other than what, like the, the, the character, no matter if they're mundane. And I thought it was, I'm curious if your opinion is this. I thought it was beautifully shot. Like I thought every shot was interesting. Like oh, every, oh, yeah. Uh, like you could watch it on mute and you're just like, oh my goodness, especially the ones in the orchestra, but not with the orchestra when the orchestra was empty. I was like, this is incredible looking. The scene that you were talking about earlier with the the, the Juilliard scene, um, that is like a 10 minute long scene, it feels like, you know, um, and probably about like three minutes in, I'm, I, I was sitting here going, wait a minute, they haven't cut away yet. This is all a wonder. Mm -hmm. And then, then I started being conscious of that the whole the whole scene, and I'm like, "Holy crap!" Like, Kate Blanchett probably memorized. I mean, that must have been pages of dialogue. I yeah, mean, I think she did an amazing an amazing job. Um, you look at the cinematography, phenomenal. The overall feeling of the the the, the movie. If you're not looking to actually just be entertained, um, like a regular movie, a regular it's not a popcorn movie. Um, absolutely phenomenal. I think it is a great movie as far as if you're talking about cinema, right? But if you're looking at it in a Joe Schmo going to the movie theater to be entertained, probably not. You're not going to like it. I'm assuming none of us watch this in theaters, right? We probably all watch this on streaming. Yeah. Um, one thing I did read about this, talking about theaters real quick, is the sound. Apparently, they did this trick with the sound where the movie starts in mono. And as the movie progresses, they keep adding more soundtracks to the mix. And it becomes stereo, then 
then like 5.1, then 7.1, and then all the way up to like Dolby Atmos and all that stuff. Now, that would have been kind of interesting to kind of experience in a theater to see if that came over consciously or not. I couldn't predict where it was going halfway through. Um, so inter- so I, in my 30s, I got tinnitus. So I kind of thought this movie, some of the things she was displaying was like someone who relies on music as their job is going to lose their sound or she, and mm-hmm. I was, some of the things she did when she got up and she was checking on the fridge because she could hear it buzzing. That is identical to what happened when I first got tinnitus where I had unplugged my TV. I was like, well, what is going on now? Obviously I wasn't hallucinating. I thought my neighbors at the time I had someone a little above me. I was like, maybe that's their TV plugged in. And then I realized I sounded insane that I can hear someone's TV humming. <laughs> I thought it was going to go down that path of, <laughs> Hey, Lydia Tara is going to, she's going to lose her marbles because she's got a slight neurological disorder and yeah. it all went spiraling down from there. I kind of thought that's where it was going. Piecing together what we know about her past and what has started to catch up with her in, in the present. It's like, okay, so you got this person that committed suicide, but she's having these weird dreams and she's also having books sent to her with uh, weird drawings and, metronome starting to act up by themselves her daughter is freaked out that there's like a ghost in the house and she has to have her foot held and i'm like okay is this starting to turn into like a horror movie Mm -hmm. because because about three quarters of the way through uh, you know that it got real dark fast and i'm like oh this is okay now we're starting to get somewhere we're like literally an hour and a half hour 45 in we have an hour left we still have a, a full feature length movie ready. Give it to me. And we don't see anything about, we don't have the door never closes on who was giving her the books, who was drawing on the, on the piece of paper, who stole her, her music book. Like who, where did it all go? Who's releasing the viral video on her? What yeah. happened to Francesca, her assistant? Nothing. What is the climax of the film? Is it where she, she, trucks uh the other composer off of the <laughs> off of the podium i, I well, literally like... thought that when she when she was there and she walked up and i was like okay well this is her piece because the guy with the trumpet is backstage but i'm like i thought she would be composing i'm like well maybe this is like some sort of cool intro for mm-hmm. her to walk out onto the podium right. and and then you know the big startup of the of the orchestra would start but when she started running out there and she started getting angry and everything, which was in the trailer and then just tackles this guy. I'm like, Whoa, okay. What's going on? Like, is this a dream? Well, no, it was, that was real. And I actually liked the way they did that. And maybe to against John's point of like, what's the climax? I don't think this movie has a, cli- I don't think it's supposed to have a climax. It's you're just watching this person's life from this short period of time, anyway, of this person's life. There's no dramatic irony in, in, in this film. We don't know anything that the characters don't know. We're, we're learning about, about what's happening in the film as the characters are learning. So we're, we're just on this, like, like to, to Rowan's point, you're just this fly on the wall watching this stuff go down. Did you guys like the mm-hmm. ending? I did not so, like the ending, but I but well, I did like the ending. It was I, this whole movie yeah, is, this whole... is constantly <laughs> this movie is constantly keeping me involved. And it's like, I don't like the slowness, but I really like the slowness. I don't like why are we taking so long? But I love the the length of this. This is incredible. Like it just keeps it 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 pisses me off and it actually gives me joy at the same time this movie it's just a weird thing but the very end i thought was uh it turned into a comedy because you go from this like the greatest person ever in music to somebody who's i, I believe in thailand or uh, philippines. somebody philippines. somewhere over or the philippines or somewhere over in in asia and you're playing for a comic-con group for like a video I, game, yeah. And I'm I like, that what? reveal was what? awesome. I I loved, I lo- I loved how they did the the end of this movie. You know, she's fall discredited. Yeah, the fall from grace. Yeah. She's discredited. But what I thought was happening is I thought she was going to ch- to, to to China. Like I thought she was going to get paid big bucks 
to bring talent to a not a developing nation, but a, t- a nation that can afford to bring in maybe people that have been cast aside. And I think she's going to be performing big, like, oh, this is prestigious. And then you're, as Kyle said, you have to wait a while to realize she's walking on stage and she's at a damn Comic Con. And <laughs> yeah, like, a, everybody's you know, dressed a, up. A developing in, in... nation. This is not yeah. glorious at all. <laughs> Yeah, because you know the very beginning of the movie, she's she's the people who watch her are dressed up in tuxes and black dresses. It's a black tie event, yep. and then at the very end of the movie, she's playing for you know a bunch of teenagers dressed up in video game gear. Yeah, she wanted to you know be the conductor of the Berlin Orchestra. She she made it. She's got all of her awards and recognitions and everything. She let it get to her head. She thought she she thought she was uh, an untouchable. And she found out very quickly that she wasn't an untouchable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's why I think going back to what is the actual, you know, climax of this movie, I, I do think it probably is, you know, the thing that happens two hours into the movie is when she uh, knocks the dude, the, the composer off stage when she finally gets to Berlin. Because we hear her say earlier in the movie that it's been a dream of hers to uh, conduct the, the Berlin Philharmonic. So she finally makes it. She finally gets there and she just screws it all up because of everything that's going on in her life. And then it's just a downward fall. And like her PR guy said, we got to start from scratch. We got to start from the base and build you back up. We need to see if we're going to stream it or skip it. Um, I would say stream it. Yes, absolutely. Yes, it's a stream. Well, I'm going to dissent. I'm going to say skip it. With that, we are basically saying you should stream it because we're, I'm getting outvoted 3 to 1. Uh, so that's going to do us today for TAR. We are going to be taking a look at another Best Picture nominee uh, for the Oscars, which is going to be Everything, Everywhere, All at Once, uh, which looks like a really interesting uh, kind of movie. Uh, so we'll see you back next Saturday for that. See you, everybody. See you. See ya.